Hey everyone, it's Cody the Astro Adventurer and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a really good tutorial lined up for you. There's been a lot of videos coming out there with this zoom in effect of pictures that were taken in astrophotography where you kind of have the stars going past you and you're almost like warping into the nebula or galaxy. And um, when I first learned how to do this, there was a lot of confusion of like, how do you actually do it? Um, there wasn't a lot out there. There's still not a whole lot out there. Some people are just like doing it and not really telling people how they're doing it. So um, I kind of pieced together some YouTube videos on my end of, of uh, some different ways to do it. So I wanted to save you all the time and just put out a quick tutorial on how to actually do that zoom in effect uh, that looks like you're kind of warping into the, the uh, nebula or the galaxy or whatever it might be. Um, so this is how I do it. I'm not saying this is the only way to do it, but I'm uh, looking forward to kind of showing you the easiest way that I've found. Now it does require you to have some certain software. Um, mainly Adobe After Effects is what I've found uh, works the best. Um, so without further ado, let's jump in and I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's go in here first and we'll open up um, Adobe and just get in there. Give it a second. It might take a little bit to load. Uh, but this is uh, actually a super easy process once you uh, figure it out. Uh, I can get it down to doing it within like a, a, a few minutes now. Um, it does take a little while to render the video, so that takes a little bit of time, obviously. But all right, we have After Effects open here, as you can see. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and click on New Project. And once we click on New Project, we're going to go New Com uh, Composition from Footage. So we're not creating a completely new composition. We already have the picture in there, hopefully, right? So uh, I'm going to click this button. And so that's going to take me to, um, actually, it's I think it's already on my default folder where I, I keep all of my uh, finished astrophotography pictures in here. And the one that I want to do today is going to be uh, Andromeda. And I haven't done a zoom in effect on Andromeda before. So here you see there's all my, <laughs> not all of them, but most of my astrophotography pictures in here. So this is the last one I did of Andromeda pretty recently. So. Um, I think this is the one we need, so I'm going to go ahead and um, open it up. Import, you see right here. It shouldn't take too long. Boom, there we go. There's Andromeda. So, what we're going to do next is go up to um, this layer button right here at the top and press New. And Whoops, sorry. New. And then we're going to create a solid layer. It's kind of creating just a, another layer on top of the picture. And I always click this make uh, comp, uh, like comp size right here too to make it the same size as the picture. And you want to keep it on white. And the default's white, so you shouldn't have to change it there. I always keep it on white. So press OK. And you're like, oh no, we just uh, messed up the picture here, right? Well, that's what it's supposed to do, so don't worry. <laughs> that happens every time. So the next step we go up here, we click on effect, and then go down to uh, simulation and then CC starburst. Now, once you do this a couple times, it will be already up at the top under effects. You'll see it right there. It's, it's one of my favorites, but you know, before you've done this before, it won't be up there. CC starburst right there. So click on that and oh, there's our picture back again, but man, does it look like a bunch of stars, right? So uh, you will have to edit the settings over here. Um, the default ones I've never found works way too many. So you're actually adding like a star field there um, in the background so yeah you're kind of adding fake stars but you know you can't make the, the still stars in your picture really move but um, it gives that effect that it is right and there uh, you want to make them as close to the same size as most of the stars in your picture okay so we'll come in here and we'll click on scatter um, for me what i found with most of, most of my pictures is that 600 for scatter works really well so see how, boom, right there, it just looks a lot better already. And we removed a lot of that clutter. I don't know why you want like any more than that, to be honest with you. And then the speed, you don't want to keep it at one because it, watch, if I click the space bar and we get this one, it'll be like way too fast. So, um, whoop, I put the speed, so right, let's put one on there again and let's check out to see what the speed, see how it's way too fast. Uh, yeah, that's, that's definitely warped, but that's a little bit too fast, right? So. You want to make it look a little bit more believable, right? So come in here to speed. 
What I found works really well is um, 0.035. It says it rounds up to four. Maybe it does. Maybe just put 0.04, right? So now when I press play, see how the stars are moving a lot more slowly, right? I think that looks a lot better visually, right? So I'm going to stop that. And then we're going to go, the only other thing I usually change is the size sometimes. I mean, right now, I think we look, we look pretty good. What I usually settle on for most of my pictures is um, 112. I know it seems random, but it seems to work a little bit better at that size. It looks better. Sometimes I find if it's much less than that, the, the stars just look too small. More than that, the stars look too big and uh, bulky, right? That doesn't look right with the, um, the photo. So now that we've got that all figured out, uh, really there's not a whole lot left to do. Um, I'm going to move this back to the beginning. We'll come down here, click on the picture here. And what we're going to do, we're going to press the S button on the uh, keyboard once we have our picture clicked. And you'll see this thing called scale comes up. And the, the other thing we're going to press is shift P. And that's the position we are in the, uh, basically in the picture, right? So the scale and the picture, uh, position, sorry. So you're going to need both of these um, to uh, do the zoom in effect that we want to do. You want to also click this little stopwatch area here that controls it for the time so that's what's going to give you that progressive zoom over the time of the video so um, that you always have to click that make sure the time thing here is in blue so again we click on the, the Andromeda picture down here we press S and then we press shift P and then that gives you position and scale and then click the little time button here so what I found works really well for most of my pictures, and I take the little slider here, you see the stars go back and forth as we go here, and I move it all the way to the edge. I found that 200% zoom works pretty well. I've done a little bit more, I've done a little bit less, but 200 usually works out really well. So there's our zoom right here. Never tried to do a zoom in on the Andromeda Galaxy before, but um, hey, we'll see how it looks, right? It's fun to experiment with things like that. So as you can see, we're getting that zoom in effect now. So it's kind of taking a while to load here. If I would press like the space bar, here we go, now it's loading. See how it's just, now we've got our zoom in effect. It's progressively zooming in slowly over the course of 30 seconds. That's what it defaults as, 30 seconds. I think you can change it, of course. Um, you might want to use 60 seconds. I've been thinking about maybe pushing to 60 seconds, but it really looks good at that 200% zoom for most of the uh, pictures that I take over the course of, of 30 seconds and with the settings that I have on the, the starburst and like all that, right? So, right, that's almost it. The only thing you have to do now, I'm going to stop this really quickly, is you go into composition and you go to add to render queue. Click that. And then we come down here. I use an iPhone, that's usually what I'm uploading these from. Um, if you're just doing it from your computer, you can use different um, settings that maybe are a little higher quality. You can use like dot .move or, or whatever it might be. Um, but come in here and what I do is uh, match render quality settings at 40 megabytes per second for H.264. Uh, and then that'll put it into an MP4 file, which is readable by pretty much anything. And then you click, sorry, let's go back. So once we click that, we click where it says output to, and see how it says not specify yet? This is where it's gonna save your, uh, your render. So your render is like, it takes the picture, it adds the star field effect with all the stars, and then it adds the zoom effect as well where the stars are going by and you're getting closer to the galaxy nebula, whatever you're doing this for. Um, you know, you can do this for all other pictures as well. It doesn't have to be astrophotography pictures. This is just the type of pictures I take, so that's what I use it for, right? So. Go in here, click on that, and I already have mine saved in a folder that's After Effects Finish Renders. And then all you're going to do is press Save, name it what you want. Um, I think we'll probably call this right Andromeda Zoom Effect. That's it. So we're going to press uh, Save, and then only thing left to do is to press render. I'm going to press render here. And depending on your computer, this can take a while, um, especially since I think we're using a pretty high quality TIFF file that's like a couple hundred megabytes, I believe. So as you see, it's starting to render here. 
I'm gonna go off camera for a second and I'll be back once it's uh, finished rendering. All right, stay tuned. Oh, 10 to 12 minutes per round 10 so that is that's it you know I'm gonna show you the finished product really quickly but uh, that's all it takes I, I like I said once you get this down I mean it might take you maybe three to five minutes of actual work and then uh, the rest of the time is just rendering it and then you can uh, save it on you know your phone send it to your phone whatever post it from from your your computer whatever you're doing it on right so um, I don't really save the, the project here. I said don't save here, and we're just going to exit out of that. And I'm just going to show you the, uh, the finished product, right? So, got in here. We're going to go to uh, After Effects Finished Renders, and there it is. There's the Andromeda one. So, that's our, our uh, finished product there. So, that's all it took. Uh, Look, I hope you really enjoyed uh, this tutorial here. I, like I said, there wasn't a whole lot out there, so I wanted to bring this to you all. So um, I hope you can see how this isn't really that hard of a, 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 pro, a, a project to take on and to do. So try it out on your own. Take some pictures. It doesn't have to be astrophotography. photography. It could be any kind of photography that you want to give that neat zoom in effect on. And uh, let me know in the comments uh, if you do it a different way or if you like the way I showed you to do it. And I'm uh, looking forward to bringing some more videos like this to you all. Would love to hear in the comments um, what else you would like to see. But um, again, thank you for joining and don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Take, take care. Bye.